nice bed. The pastors are very, very close. I was having sleep on the chart table, and I actually sat up to clean the windows to look out. There on the port side, just to the other side of the boat, was a nice boat flying past. The need to sleep and stay alert is a problem also faced in the natural world. Dolphins come up for air every five minutes. So how do they sleep? They do it by using half of their brain. Every one to three hours, one half of the brain falls into a deep sleep while the other half remains awake. Migratory birds will fly for days at a time without sleeping, but they don't appear to suffer any ill effects. How they do it is something scientists and the military would dearly like to know. Even among humans, there is a discrepancy between how much sleep each of us needs. It's this discrepancy that Yakov Stern thinks will be the key to curing sleepiness. We were aware that there are individual differences in how well people cope with sleep deprivation. Some people can really handle it very well, and other people just can't make it. To find out why that is, Yakov kept volunteers awake for 48 hours and then tested their reaction times and ability to solve problems. I felt disoriented. I, my vision was blurry. I was seeing shadows that did not exist. Using an MRI scanner, he was able to look inside Afari's brain and identify the changes in brain activity when sleep deprived. During some of the tasks, I couldn't remember when images disappeared or when they reappeared. What our imaging is telling us is that the people who can handle sleep deprivation well are using brain areas differently than those who can't. Yakov has identified the networks of the brain that close down when we're sleep deprived. If he could find a way to switch them back on, it could allow all of us to improve our performance on little or no sleep. Working with his colleague, Sarah Lisenby, Yakov is using a device called transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS. One of the really exciting things about TMS is that it permits us to hop over the scalp and skull and deliver small amounts of stimulation to different regions of the brain to find out what they do and see if they can be stimulated in ways that might be helpful. By stimulating the parts of the brain that close down during sleep deprivation, they hope to improve Afari's performance. His responses on this working memory task will help us determine whether the dosage of TMS that we're administering is going to be helpful in improving performance, making him sharper and quicker following sleep deprivation. The study is ongoing and results so far have been promising. They hope that in time, this technique will be tried out on real soldiers. It's the end of day two, and the volunteers are desperate to sleep. But they must maintain a defensive perimeter around the camp. In the face of acute sleep deprivation, the body compensates by releasing stress hormones. They will keep you alert, but prolonged exposure kills brain cells by the billion. Base camp is under attack. Take them! One o'clock! One to five o'clock we're supposed to be. Unit, one, two, five. Unit, spread out! Being dropped back the other side. Cover there, directly behind you. The enemy captures them. It's a sudden and brutal event designed to stimulate the shock of falling into enemy hands. 